When volcanoes erupt in movies, they do so unexpectedly, and the eruption lasts as long as the story needs it to last. But come on, science. What's it really like? Hey there, hotheads. I'm Trace. Thanks for watching D News. I think my producer Pam had it right when she said volcanoes and dinosaurs are some of the first things that get people excited about science. Good one, Pam. Volcanoes are incredible to witness, unless you live in the path of one. They can be destructive, dangerous, and deadly, but they're a glimpse into the awesome power of the planet that is always beneath our feet. This week, unexpectedly, after 42 years of silence, Calbuco volcano erupted in southern Chile. Residents had 15 minutes of warning, and 4,000 people had to be evacuated as the volcano spewed ash into the sky. The pictures are a bit like John's visions of the apocalypse for sure, but volcano lightning, while hellish, was actually explained in an old D News video. If you were a subscriber, you already know all that. But if you aren't, take a second and subscribe. No doubt residents are asking, how long can this be expected to continue? According to research from the Smithsonian Institution's Global Volcanism Project, the medium length of a volcanic eruption is seven weeks. But the length of volcanic eruptions throughout scientific history is super varied. For example, the crater at the top of Mount Nyiragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo held a lava lake from 1894 till 1977 when it erupted and the lake drained down the volcano in less than an hour. Conversely, the eruption of Stromboli volcano off the coast of southern Italy has had low-level activity and occasional lava flows and explosions since 450 BCE. Stromboli has been erupting for almost 2,500 years, most recently with fairly large explosions in August of last year. The length and behavior of these long-term volcanic eruptions can teach volcanologists and geologists a ton about the ground beneath our feet. Mountains are created when tectonic plates jam together, forcing the rock upward, or when magma from underneath the Earth's crust rises through a weak spot, creating a volcano. Magma is kind of like a bubble in water. It's lighter than the rock around it and slowly rises until it hits the surface. As magma gets closer to the surface, gases appear inside of the magma, like nitrogen bubbles in a diver's blood. When the magma and gas reach the surface, they explode into the comparatively thin atmosphere above the crust. When that happens, it's kind of like a soda bottle that's just been shook up, bubbles and explosions galore. In 1983, magma under Mount Kilauea in Hawaii forced open a rift four miles long. When Kilauea cracked, lava fountains shot 1,500 feet into the air, with activity continuing for three years before more cracks spread the pressure under the volcano around, causing a low-level continuous eruption, which is still going on today, 32 years later. Now the eruption is used to learn more about how lava behaves and how magma flows beneath the crust. Scientists studying the Kilauea eruption and a nearby volcano that formed over a crack called Pu'u'u'u have learned more about how the tectonic plates our planet's continents ride on, how earthquakes happen, and more about the toxic gases that escape during volcanic activity. They can also track the slight swelling of rock at the volcano's surface to find the magma pipes which feed the eruption, sort of like the volcano's blood vessels. That is super cool. Luckily, Chile's Calbuco isn't near any major population centers, but when it erupted in 1895, it threw one-foot bombs five miles from the eruption site. So this isn't the big one for old Cal. Chile has many hundreds of volcanoes, and according to Penn State, this eruption should continue until the magma melt between the volcano is stabilized and the pressurized gas, which is built up, is released. But honestly, no one can tell exactly how long that's gonna be. Volcanoes are super cool. Seriously, who does not love watching these things? You know, from a safe distance, of course. Remember that video I mentioned earlier in the beginning about volcano lightning? If you haven't watched it yet, subscribe to D News so you don't miss any more of these videos, and then watch it here. Clouds are just a collection of these little drips of moisture condensed around tiny particles floating in the air. It's the particles that cause all of that electrical fun. Thanks for tuning in to D News, everybody. We love you all for watching, and if you have ever seen a picture of lava IRL, Send me a picture over on Twitter at Trace Dominguez or send it to all of us at DNews.